Hey boys, here's a knife you can really do things with. It has all the blades you need for making toy villages, doing wood carving, cutting totem poles, linoleum blocks, or general whittling. There's no other knife like it. Has blades for right angle cutting, a sharp edge gouge, and a powerful roughing blade. An extra screwdriver and can opener blade, which locks open, makes it handy for outdoors too. I'm reading from an old ad uh, for this Catterall Goose Cutlery Company out of Little Valley, New York, a uh, Whittlecraft knife. So this knife was first produced uh, by Catterall Goose in 1931 and they made it up through 1942, uh, probably all of them before World War II. And the story goes that, that they went to a National Scout Jamboree and polled over like 300 scouts and adult leaders on what they would like to see in a Boy Scout knife. And what they came away with was a pocket knife specifically designed for wood carving. And supposedly every tool uh, has a wood carving function. Okay, so let's just take a look at the knife before we do. Let's see how big it is because it does look smaller than um, most of my scout knives. And it seems to come in just under a hair under three and a half inches. It's not a real big knife. And this one is a four blade model without a bail. They made a, this four blade model with and without bail. And they also made a three blade model, which is just like this, I think, but it eliminated the screwdriver, cap lifter, can opener combo. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but Catterall Goose's shield was this elongated um, octagonal shield. And it had the Be Prepared motto and the first class symbol. And you can see it's set in brown bone scales there, three pins. There are no lines on the bolsters, uh, brass liners and spacer. So that's a look at the outside of the knife. And let's just go through the tools. Uh, remember, all these tools are supposed to be specifically for wood carving. And this first one was described as the big blade for coursework. And um, all these are carbon steel, of course. Now this blade is obviously not very big. When I first saw the knife, I thought perhaps it had been broken off and severely shortened. And it may have been just a millimeter or two, but you, you can see it has to fit in here. So it's just not a very big, big blade. Um, and on the mark side here, there is no tang stamp. But on the pile side, we have the manufacturer's model number which, as I recall, and my glasses on, is like a D2589. And then let's take a look at what was described as a scraper blade with a screwdriver, can opener, and bottle opener all in one. So let me get that oil off of there. You can see here it has a, a brass knurl to pull it out of the cutout here. And uh, here's the cap lifter, here's the can opener. And on this side of the screwdriver, we've got, well on both sides, we've got a bevel, so we have a sharpened edge. That's your scraper blade, screwdriver, uh, and it locks. You have a liner lock there, a brass liner lock. So way cool, kind of ahead of its time. Uh, let's jump over here. There's another cutout and a little nail nick where you can pull out what looks to be an awl, but in fact was described as a new hollow chisel blade for extra fine work, as in carving the arms, face, feet, etc. of figures. <laughs> and there you can see the uh, cupped out place where you could chisel. And then finally, here, and this is kind of a little hard to get out because the nail nick is way back by the pivot. But there is a, uh, what's described as a small blade with a 45 degree offset point for uh, unusual close-in work. <laughs> and this one does have a tank stamp. And it reads Cataragus, Cataragus, uh, in the middle, Cutlery Company. And then way down there deep, if we can get that, it's very hard to see, even in person, Little Valley, New York.
So this is a pretty unique scout knife, and I think they're pretty sought after. This one's in pretty good shape. I'm really happy to have it. It's just got a lot of interesting history. There's a lot of old ads and things online. Um, here's one, something I want to show you out of my scout book. Cata Raw Goose also sold a uh, toy making outfit. Came in a little bag and it says what to make, how to make it, and the wood to make it with. So you had instructions and some wood in a bag they sold you for your Whittlecraft knife. And then one other thing I want to show. You know, today kids make things on Minecraft uh, on their smartphones, right? Uh, here are, here's a picture of two Boy Scouts carving paddles, <laughs> carving canoe paddles for their merit badge. Now, I can't imagine they did that with this little knife, uh, but uh, can you imagine asking kids to do that today? Amazing. I'm going to finish up with uh, some pictures of the old Cataraugus Cutlery Company and a little voiceover history. Thanks for watching. Cataraugus Cutlery Company began as the New York distribution company JBF Champlin & Son, founded by John Champlin and his son Tint in 1882. The Champlins expanded into knife production, and along with W.R. Case and his brothers, they formed Cataraugus Cutlery in 1886, based in Little Valley. The company hired expert cutlers from Germany, England, and other U.S. manufacturers to produce high-quality cutlery. Admiral Byrd selected Cataraugus knives to take on his expedition to the South Pole. Over time, the Case family separated from Cataraugus to form a W.R. Case & Sons Cutlery Company, incorporated in 1905. Cataraugus closed business in 1963. Two separate fires destroyed the building in August 2015 and August 2016. It had stood for several decades vacant and had fallen into severe disrepair by the time of the first fire.